welcome back. And in this video I want to talk about another cool feature of Burp Suit that could allow us to perform the brute forcing of a login page a lot more easier than we did with Hydra Tool. So Burp Suit, besides you being able to inspect all the packets and intercept the packets and change them, you can also do some other cool things as well. And one of those cool things is brute forcing a login page. Now this is something that we're going to perform with the community version and the community version of Burp Suit has some limitations. The brute forcing will not go as fast as if you for example had the pro version, but nonetheless let us see how it would look like. So let's go and visit the login page of our DVWA. If I navigate right here and here we must log into our DVWA. The first thing that we want to do is we want to specify any credentials right here, for example, test and test. And once we click on login, this request that we just performed on our DVWA page will be saved inside of our burp suit. So under the targets, we got our target machine right here. And if I find the packet, here it is. Here is the packet that we sent. So we send the post request and we send our username of test and password of test to the target web page. Now, what we want to do in order to perform the brute forcing attack is we want to first right click on this packet, which we use to send our username and password, and we want to send it to intruder. Click on that and you will see this intruder bar light up. You want to navigate to the intruder and here there are some options that we want to set before being able to brute force a web page. So here under the target tab, there is nothing that we want to change. Let us just move on to the positions tab. And in the positions tab, you will see this request that we just sent. You will see some of the fields that are already selected. And you will see this attack type bar up here. The first thing that we want to change is we want to change the attack type from sniper to cluster bomb. And what this simply means is since we're going to brute force both username and password, we want to be able to send both of them at the same time and we can do that with the help of cluster bomb. If you for example knew the username and you just wanted to brute force the password, you could select right here sniper and then you could just brute force a password. Right now we're going to go with the cluster bomb and here we got five fields selected. Now we don't need all of them, we only need the username and password field selected so what we can do is we can click on this clear button it will unselect all of these fields and then to select the fields that we want, we can just double click on the field. For example, username equals test. I double click on test, it will select it. Then I click on add and I do the same for the password. Select it right here and I click on add. This will select just username and password. And once we do that, we can navigate to the payload tab, where we are going to see a bunch of other options that we can also set. So under these payload sets, this will be the payload set for the username and if I select this number 2, this will be the payload set for the password because those are the only two fields that we selected. If I go with the username first, so I change right here to 1, I will select the payload type to be a simple list because we are going to brute force with a list and under the payload options I want to load that list. So I just click on this load button, then I can find usernames.txt and you can see by default it will load all of the usernames from that list. Now I can delete this empty field, we don't really need it. And once I do that, once I load the usernames list right here, I can change from one to two. And now I leave it once again on simple list. And here I want to load the passwords.txt. So once again, I find the passwords.txt and it will load all of the passwords from that file. Once all of that is ready, that would be pretty much it. We are ready to start our attack. So if I click right here on start attack, it will tell me that the community edition of Burp Suit contains a demo version of Burp Intruder, so some functionality will be disabled. We already knew that, so let's just go and click on OK. And this will start our attack. Down here we can see the progress bar as to how fast this goes, and you will notice it goes a little bit slower than the Hydra tool, but nonetheless it is still brute forcing our page. Let's wait for it to finish. And it has finished, but it seems that we didn't get any results right here. 
And by the way, inside of the intruder, how we can search for results is you can see all of the combinations of usernames and passwords right here. We can see the status and we can also see the length. Now, the length for the correct username and password will in 99.9% .9 of cases be different than the incorrect usernames and passwords. And in this case, it seems that all of them have the same length. So for some reason, it didn't manage to find our correct username and password. Now, that could be due to many reasons. But if I just select one of the combinations and I go to the response, we get the 302 found. If I scroll down inside of the response, it doesn't give us any HTML content. This usually means that it is performing redirection. And if I go to our options inside of our intruder, all the way down under the options, we get follow redirections, never. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check this on always, and I'm going to start the attack once again. Click on OK. And now we can see it has different type of length. Now, all we need to do is wait for the combination of admin and password. And hopefully this time we're going to get different length of the response for the correct username and correct password. So let's wait for this to finish. Okay, so it has finished and let's scroll all the way down. We can see every response has the length of 1638. And if I scroll down here, we can see that the combinations of admin and password, both capital and lowercase, have different length. This is a pretty good indication that these are the correct usernames and correct passwords. We can also see that it did indeed perform the redirection, as we can see multiple requests and multiple replies right here. So that would be about it. This is a simple way that you can perform brute forcing with the help of Burp Suit. Now, I still prefer the Hydra tool due to it being a little bit faster than the Burp Suit Intruder, but this one, however, is easier to perform since for Hydra you need to perform different type of syntax and sometimes it might not work, while this is just setting some of the options, selecting the fields and running the brute force attack. Now that we finished this, in the next section we are ready to start our coding projects regarding the web application penetration testing. See you there.